Welcome to the American Academy of Grief Counseling's videogram on grieving styles. And in this video, we're going to look at the different ways individuals can grieve or express themselves. And there are a variety of ways. And as we all know, the way one grieves is very, very unique. Now, although everyone grieves uniquely due to a variety of subjective differences within their own makeup or due to multiple varieties that affect the loss itself, we, we all, though, grieve differently. But within the human species, there is a universal type of set of norms that govern how the human species grieves itself. So there are certain qualities that you're always going to find, but these qualities of grief are gonna be very differently manifested in individuals. So this in turn is gonna create a variety of different types of reactions to loss. Although psychologically, we can look at a basic blueprint of humankind and humankind's reaction to grief. We're always going to see denial, numbness, anger, guilt, or a deeper depression. These are just common traits that are going to be found, but how they're going to be found, the intensity or lack of intensity, and the surrounding elements of the loss itself. Was it traumatic or was it a basic expected loss? So there are so many varieties that it creates different grieving styles within a set norm, a very wide mean, but nonetheless, there are boundaries within the human species and how we react to grief. Some are very benign and others can also become very pathological. So we need to understand how certain individuals grieve differently and to understand these types of styles. One of the most common is, is the person naturally an introvert or is the person an extrovert? Obviously extroverts are going to display what they feel to everyone. They're gonna be more talkative about it. While an introvert is going to want to keep everything to themselves for the most part. And in some ways being an introvert is initially good because an introvert is going to look deep within themselves and think about the grief to try to understand the grief. An extrovert is just immediately going to display emotion. I think though, what's important is that we have a little bit of introvert and a little bit of extrovert in our grieving styles. But unfortunately, some individuals go completely monk and others are ready to write their life story on the front page of the paper. And in this, we have to, as grief counselors or licensed professional counselors out there, we need to be able to address these particular styles and to guide them as best as we can so that they properly balance their grief reactions to their unique grieving situation itself. Now, there are a couple types of grievers, I think, that we can pinpoint more precisely. Obviously, many of them coincide with if one is more of an introvert or if one is more of an extrovert. The cognitive or thinking griever is someone who's very analytical and they want to understand. And in some ways, it's good. There are many good qualities from a thinking perspective on grief. These individuals are going to try to understand the loss and they're going to try to reframe it to fit the narrative. So it's very essential that we think and understand grief itself. These individuals also tend to look more for help. Uh, they look for resources. Uh, if they're an extrovert, they might look for other opinions outside of themselves. If they're more introvert, they might look more for individual books to read, or it might be a combination of both. However, if you're just cognitive regarding your loss and you're over analytical regarding your loss, you're going to be less open to emotion. 
maybe more Vulcan like, so to speak. You're going to want to think it so much that some individuals obsessively overthink a loss. And they can also become argumentative when individuals try to discuss it or to point out certain aspects of that particular loss. So as we're going to see, when we look through all of these types of styles, whether introvert, extrovert, or these next few that we're going to go through, there are strengths to these styles, but there are also weaknesses to these various types of grieving styles. And again, this is not to point out that there's a wrong way to grieve. Individuals have to express their grief in their best pattern that is for them. But if we see an unhealthy type of grieving that is pushing others aside, we can gently sometimes nudge an individual to express a different way. Cognitive is definitely a good way. And it's important for others who may not be thinking. And some grievers are just emotional and they might need some thinking. But as an emotional griever, there's benefits. The emotional griever is able to express their loss. And they can be either an extrovert or an introvert and in how they express it. An introvert will express their tears through their tears in their own privacy of their own home, while an extrovert will grieve before others. And these are all healthy things. And in so the emotional griever is able to release the toxins, the negative emotions, and to get them out. And this is something that the analytical cognitive thinker, if that's all they do, is really not able to do. However, emotional grievers who have no anchor of some intellectual thought, they can become so emotional at times that they can become deeply depressed and unable to really comprehend the grief itself. So emotions, good. Emotions without reason, emotions that aren't measured can lead to later problems with this type of grieving style if it is all by itself. Pragmatic grievers are those who take to action. They look to resolve the actual situation. So these are grievers who will look to take action in regards to returning to work and in their work or their hobbies, this is where they find solace. They're able to display their emotion by getting back to normalcy. And in this way, they're able to incorporate the loss and express the loss in action. However, those who only look to do things are also sometimes trying to do something opposite. Instead of putting, uh, trying to cope with grief through action, through activity, some individuals try to deny grief, to escape grief, to escape the loss, not even think about the loss through a hobby or work and pretend nothing ever happened. So an individual who's been grieving all day and is able to pragmatically then an hour later get up, go mow the yard, or to go to work on Monday, just to give their body healing time from it is beneficial. However, an individual who does the same thing, an individual who mows the yard just because he doesn't want to think about the loss of his mother or father, and tries to go to work and works crazy overtime hours and buries himself or herself in these types of activities, this is when activity can become a problem and it can lead to a denial of loss and it can lead to a lot of anger over the loss, especially if the loss is brought up because they're trying to put their head in the ground, so to speak. We also have to be very careful when looking at introvert, extrovert, whether someone is more of a cognitive griever, an emotional griever, or a pragmatic action griever. We have to look at also not to be assumptive that one fits one gender and one doesn't fit the other gender. So a man or a woman can experience these types of grief. Just because a man is a man doesn't mean he might not initially be in an emotional griever. A woman could very easily be uh, a pragmatic griever. We tend to think that men are, are not emotional and they're just going to get back to work and they're just going to think about their grief in an introvert fashion. 
And we tend to think women are going to be over emotional, not really think about the grief and just go forward expressing it and falling into a deep depression. And that's not the case either. Many women handle grief the way we would assume stereotypes of men would and vice versa. So we cannot allow grieving styles to be stereotypical of a particular gender or a particular group or a particular race or a particular culture. We can't make these assumptions that a certain individual is going to grieve a certain way. This based on outward appearance. And I think that's very important as we study these types of grieving styles themselves. So while there is no right way to grieve, it's still essential to grieve in a healthy fashion. And it almost seems paradoxical, but there are healthy and unhealthy grieving patterns. So we all have our own subjective loss that we have to deal with, and we deal with it in our own unique way, but it has to be within the norms of human reaction, as I said in the beginning, of how humans respond to grief. There has to be some boxes to check off, and how we express that or deal with that is our own way. So emotionally, we need to express the loss, and it needs to be, but it needs to be measured properly to the point where we're not falling into a deep depression because of it. Not that it's overtaking our entire existence, our entire life. So we need the emotion, but it has to be measured. If not, we're going to be trapped in extreme emotional outbursts. We want to involve thinking. Thinking and cognitive functioning is important to understand the loss and how to put it in. But if we become too cognitive at the expense of emotion, then that can lead us to isolation. Action. One needs to re-immerse themselves into life, but doing to the point where it distracts you, to makes you deny the loss itself, that can be equally harmful. So one can find healing within or without but sometimes we need a little bit of both, a little bit of activity, a little bit of alone time. And in that alone time, we need to be emotional and thinking. And these are healthy ways that we can grieve. Now, certain individuals are gonna be more top heavy in certain ways. One will be maybe be more thinking than emotional and another might be more about activity than thinking. And we can't judge whether this is good or bad for this particular individual, but we can analyze that if someone is overindulging in one of these three columns, they're overindulging in one at the expense of the other, we can see that there needs to be some balance at least in that, whether they're an introvert or an extrovert, whether they're a man or a woman, whatever race or culture they come from. Because again, we don't want to stereotype or typecast a certain individual as this type of griever based on who they are gender-wise or cultural-wise. We need to understand that anyone can grieve any particular style, but those styles need to be at least healthy and in some way at least balanced. We are the American Academy of Grief Counseling. Our phone number is 330-652-7776, and our email is info at AIHCP.org, and below is the link to our grief counseling program, and with that link, you can learn about our program itself and how to become certified. There's four core courses that lead to a four-year certification. Courses are online, independent study, and you can move at your own speed and your own pace. So if qualified, please Check that out and see if it fits your academic goals and needs. In regards again to grieving styles, I think it's very important for ourselves because it's very important to know thyself. It's very important for us to know what is our primary go-to style. Are we more cognitive, more emotional, or more pragmatic? We need to look at that. 
and we need to see how do we grieve and are we balanced at least to some extent it's all right to be a little bit more one than the other but are we properly balancing how we experience the grief so that we come out with the most optimal health fashion healthy uh, lifestyle and fashion uh, a lot of the information uh, today came from uh, The Unwanted Gift of Grief. It's a textbook that we use in one of our courses. So again, that textbook is The Unwanted Gift of Grief. And it goes over some of these types of grieving styles as well. I'd like to thank you for listening today and have a good day.